change is the rhythm of living, moving in unison towards greater meaning. How does one nurture excellence in a group with over a hundred companies? When we started this movement in 95, we started this as, as a means of, of trying to enunciate and create a, a formal focus for business excellence. And it is to the credit of the people who put this whole movement together and doggedly pursued this, that it's soon got to be seen as the vehicle for business excellence. Only through perseverance can one achieve excellence. The quest is never ending. There is much more to be done. From where we are today, we can move to a new and a much higher plane. If we accept the fact that we need to be bolder, more innovative and more creative in what we do than we have been. Just when India was on the verge of liberalizing, there was a CII mission to Japan. And there we learned how far behind we were in the quality, overall quality movement. We were always very particular, particular regarding small Q, which is the quality of our products. That I think was in our bloodstream right from the time that I joined. But the big Q, you know, looking after customers and looking at quality in everything that we did in our processes, getting rid of bureaucratic systems and so on, that was totally new to us. And my defining moment came when I went to Japan and I saw where they were and compared it where we were. And there was a huge gap. And we've got to do something if we have to compete and win in this uh, international environment. It was uh, in May 1994, we had invited Mr. Tata to be with us to celebrate our uh, Tata Honeywell's certification for ISO 9001. We had already adopted the uh, Honeywell quality value of, uh, for our uh, for Tata Honeywell. And uh, we uh, suggested to Mr. Tata that such a program could be highly valuable to other Tata Group companies. He immediately liked that idea. In 1995, we had our first uh, Network of Champions meeting. This was a meeting where uh, we brought in all the quality heads representing different companies. Mr. Tata, despite his long overseas travel, came in the morning and came back in the afternoon. As part of the day's discussion, uh, we got, to f got a feeling of what the roadblocks are from all these quality heads to implement a program of this nature. And the leading thought was the lack of CEO buy-in. And that's how the CEO meet came into being, which today is AGMM. I think the turning point uh, uh, for the moment was, uh, I remember we had an executive committee meeting when I was the CEO of TQMS with Mr. Tata and Mr. Tata reiterated the fact again that he wanted to use this model to be used by companies uh, to drive continuous improvement and not merely to chase a score or to win an award and that's when Mr. Kupal Krishnan told us that this was our unique opportunity to rebrand the program and his hands went up and said you can now call it the Tata Business Excellence Model TBEM. I think it was in December 2000 when I was invited to present the business excellence status of the Tata Group to the Group Strategy Forum chaired by Mr. Ratan Tata. We had done a benchmark study with a Fortune 500 company 
What we found was over a period of four years, Tata Group had achieved a score band of 250 to 350, whereas this Fortune 500 company had achieved 650 to 750 scores. Mr. Tata took this slide and presented it to the AGMM of 2001. And he provoked the CEOs present there, saying that we have to put the house in order through leadership commitment and robust strategies. In January 2002, and uh, discovered uh, that there's a concept called the BEBP, which required assessment scores of companies to follow a trajectory. We put up a red list and a green list. I was cautioned by my colleagues that this would not be very popular, and indeed it wasn't. But the net result is it uh, created the trigger for uh, genuine engagement as opposed to going through the motions. The participation of the EC and of the chairman personally uh, in those early years of growth was critical to making that growth happen. And as a result, I think several more companies started taking it seriously and then eventually started seeing value out of it. The willingness to embrace change and transform one's mindset is an elusive paradigm. The very notion that a business needs to assess itself on an ongoing basis and not merely on PNL performance, the very notion that every individual needs to assess how much he or she is contributing to the business in a structured professional manner and the very fact that the company, the CEO, the senior leadership, the board and the Tata group is constantly looking at themselves, assessing their own performance and then moving ahead, improving that performance itself is the biggest transformation. And that is what gives us the sustained competitive advantage in the marketplace. Mentorship is a unique process in Tata group. It has brought huge value to the assessment process. The mentors have enriched the quality of feedback by their business insights. On the other hand, uh, they have taken enormous amount of learning from the companies to their own companies that helped in improving the business excellence journey in their own companies. Turning point came about when uh, I was made the mentor. That was the first year the mentors uh, uh, came into TBM and I was made the mentor for Tata Steel and uh, I said to myself you know I know nothing about TBM I know nothing about mentoring uh, the team and went across Jamshedpur with just just one uh, thought in mind let me find out what Tata Steel has done and, and how have they used TBM and become the company they have in terms of business excellence and I think I came away with a whole host of ideas. And I remember uh, talking to Dr. Irani, who was the managing director at that time. And I said, uh, Doc, I'm going to steal shamelessly from Tata Steel. And he laughed. And, and he said, you know, that's a whole idea. Take whatever you want. And we'll come to you and, and see what we can take from you. And I think this, to me, is the core of TBM. To take what others have done, to learn from others, to borrow, to understand the challenges they've gone through, to understand how they have overcome those challenges, and to learn yourself. Sometimes companies in early stages of TPM think that by writing a bulletproof application, by window dressing, or by applying other methodology, they'll be able to advance in their excellence journey. We don't want uh, uh, window dressing, but we want uh, uh, substance. And uh, the systems we have now are robust enough to differentiate between the two. That means window dressers are easily spotted and put in place. TBM is like a well-oiled machine with components like innovation, climate change, corporate governance and safety. And this machine helps companies to be on the journey to excellence. Like Transformers, it will continuously evolve. In many ways, it's TBM has very quietly brought everybody together, 
brought about a, a spirit, if you like, to the brand, uh, and and brought a certain understanding that that this is one one group. That the Tatas is one. Experience the strength of a cohesive force.